I love when Dalton yells at me, go! It is Texags Rewind presented by T-Mobile, David Nuno and Tomas Romo, Mr. Book It here. Hey, buddy. How's it going? I love how you just came in here like, I'm doing this show. I don't care if he invites me or not. I'm doing it. Yeah, I thought I'd come in. I think you, I thought you need a co-host for the Rewind. I, I don't mind. I, I think the, the Rewind is better when people are here. So you had a fun show. You were on it. Good, yeah, it good, was. For you, just, yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it was a good little bit, though. It was a good little bit. You're yeah, right. We it, talked a lot about the NFL. And the shirt that he's trying to get everybody to buy at TomasRomo.com if you want to buy it. Is that a fake site I just made up or yeah, do you have it? a fake site. Fake right. site. Fake site. So don't go there. But uh, listen to the show. And on the Rewind, we have a Jimbo Fisher talking. Not leaving, right? We uh, played some of his press conference. We gave, us, we gave you guys our analysis of what the press conference was like afterwards and what it means moving forward, obviously, with the recruits. Uh, Le'Veon Moss here said he's coming to Texas A&M, so that was good times. Shereen Williams, Ags in the NFL. We always try to break it down on a Tuesday. We had head, uh, former A&M linebackers coach Alan Waddell on the program. Talk Jimbo, talk what went wrong at Ole Miss and, and looking ahead. And also Sports Radio 610, John Lopez. I call him J-Lo. Breaking it all down here on Tex Ags Rewind. Because uh, I didn't know about he, that he was even on Fine Bomb, so I saw it on Texags, the forums they were talking about him, people mad, et cetera. And I called him up and said, he said, uh, did you not see the Jimbo's response to my question on the uh, in his press conference? He said, no, I've uh, I was in Sarkeesian's press conference. I uh, sat at the same time. So uh, so apparently what happened was uh, uh, he goes on Fine Bomb. Fine Bomb will call him up earlier in the day, assuming that they're going to talk about Texas and Kansas. And Feinbaum hits him with that question. Well, he doesn't know that what Jimbo has said, and he's still going on the premise of when Jimbo says, I plan to, to be at A&M, which I even said, you know, that leaves you uneasy because there's a big difference between saying I plan and I will be. That's, that's one of those things that in the past you've heard coaches like Nick Saban say, you know, well, he actually said I'm not going to right. leave. But – uh, so that's just one of those buzzwords. You say, okay, he said a plan, you know, that leaves you an out. So, uh, then I said, no, no, he actually, and he go, oh, well, you know, that, that, that's different. So, um, I think anybody that actually watched or heard that press conference, heard what, uh, Jimbo, how he emphatically said, I ain't going anywhere or nowhere or however he said it. Uh, I, I think if you actually paid attention and if you're not, if you're not, uh, invested, yeah, uh, or rooting for uh, for him to go, then uh, th- then it made it clear. In fact, he even said, "Is that clean enough?" I think he meant to say, "Is that clear enough?" But th- you know that I'm not going. I'd be you know the dumbest man on God's earth if I did. So we live in this society in this new digital age where interactions equal self worth, right? And clicks equal how good you're doing. Uh, at your job, if you're a journalist, let's just say. And I think that's what sometimes these guys who have contrarian thoughts are doing. They don't realize it, you know, but it's, it's, you post something often for a response, right? Now, I know that he's a, just a play-by-play guy, and this goes beyond Timmy B. This is people out there. We tweet things, we put reports out there to inform, entertain, and c- start dialogue. And maybe what his point of view, he really believes that. But it came across as, I'm going to be different than everybody else, and I want to hear the heat, and then I want to turn off the heat. That's how it came across to me. Uh, we'll see how things play out with, with people's opinions about this. But I, I searched yesterday the Bruce Feldmans of the world to see, and it, it, it seemed like most people took what Jimbo said to be, he's staying at A&M. Well, I mean, he, he said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not interested. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'd have to be the dumbest man on God's earth to be assembling this recruiting class, which he hinted might, he thinks might end up being number one in the nation. Right. Uh, and recruit those guys to go and then play against me. I mean, if you can't, after all that, and him saying, I ain't going nowhere, this is where I want to be, uh, and you can't say, okay, end of story, then you're just... You're just fooling yourself. Yeah. So we have a show topic today. Very simple one. You probably expected this one coming. Uh, what did you think of Jimbo's response about the LSU rumors? 
You can be a part of the conversation by calling the BCSI hotline. We'll take some phone calls today, 979-693-1150, 979-693-1150. You can also text the AMB text line, 979-693-1150, AMB, a call station branch of the Amarillo National Bank, Good Texas Banking, the website, amb.com. All right, so let's listen to his response. And in a little bit, we're going to go to journalism school, and I'm going to give you props on how you ask questions because – People believe it's real simple to ask a question in, the, in that environment. It is not because if you leave coaches or players any leeway, they can answer it a different way. They can give you a yes answer. You can get them confused with how long your question is. You ask very good questions, and you deserve um, – it's what we do. So I'm giving you props for being a good dad. I'm giving you props for being a good reporter, well, thank right? You. Thank you. Uh, you're doing what you're supposed to do, and you do it well. But let's listen to Jimbo's response yesterday after the great OB asked him the, uh, the tough question. Well, then I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, amid of the persistent reports, are you at a point where you can uh, guarantee that you're going to be staying at A&M for next let me, season let me and ask beyond? You this. Here's, here's the best. I, I've told everybody I'm staying here, and I've told everybody I plan on being the coach at A&M. All right. And everybody thinks all coaches lie. I know. I know y'all don't believe us, all right? That's why we don't trust y'all, okay? <laughs> so we're even, Okay. Whatever we say, nothing's off the record, okay? To you. It's off the record. No, it ain't off the record. You didn't say that, all right? <laughs> but I'm joking. But it, we're going to recruit maybe as good a class. Here's the best. Because I said the other things. I plan on being. I love the AD. I love the president. I love the chancellor. I love living here. I love being in my ranch. I love the family loves it here. I love, I love Kyle Field. I love the people. Which who, I love all that stuff. And that's obviously not good enough. And I get it. I'm not, and I'm not mad at you. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> seriously. I, I, I read the reports and people come to me. I say, I don't want to hear. I'm not interested. We may, we may recruit number one. We, we're going to recruit an unbelievable class this year, okay? So I'm either the dumbest human being on God's earth, okay, who's going to recruit all these guys to A&M so I can go across over here and go play against them, okay? If I, do, if I did that, you ought, to, you ought to say, that's the dumbest human being. I don't want him to be my coach, okay? Guys, we're going to recruit a heck of a class. We're going to have special things here. We're building special things. They're investing in the program. They're investing in everything we got. We're building a culture. We're not where we are. And that, and that was a disappointing thing about Saturday for me, that we didn't take a step in some of the things I thought we really should have. And it wasn't because I want to. It's kind of how to. And I got to do a better job explaining to our players to get them to do it. But I want to be at A&M. I plan on being at A&M. I ain't going to know. I don't want to be nowhere else. I love being right here. Is that clean enough? Amani wants some love. We haven't given him love in a really long time. And he's had a huge win. Played the Cowboys this week. He had uh, 17 defensive snaps and 17 special team snaps, and he made the most of those. Seven tackles, a tackle for loss, and also had a, a special teams tackle. Huge win for the Chiefs. Big game this weekend, Chiefs and Cowboys in Kansas City. Number two, I'm going to go with Ryan Tannehill again. 19-27, 2-13, a touchdown, and also had a TD run. Big win over the Saints. If you look at the Titans' resume, they have a better resume, I think, than any team in football. They've beaten more really good teams than any other team uh, in the NFL has. And then, number one, I mean, there were lots of choices with, with Mike Evans and Miles had a sack and Ricky Sills Jones, but uh, two of those three teams came out of the losing end. I'm going to go with Dan Campbell. And I know it wasn't a win. But he got the tie with the Detroit Lions, and, and it's a step in the right direction. I just think he's done a really good job with very little talent in Detroit. Uh, and kudos to him. He took over play calling duties this week, saw a difference in that offense, uh, and they were able to get the tie with the Steelers. And I realize the Steelers without Ben Roethlisberger, but I just think the Lions are better uh, than, than that O oh, and whatever is one record that they have now. I do think this is a team that's going to win at least one game and they're headed in the right direction. Just need a little more talent. And then a couple of disastrous moments. Just uh, take me back. What went wrong? Gosh, <laughs> that's the $64,000 question. You know, in this conference, we thought we were, I thoroughly thought we were over the hump. Over the hump means you beat the Mississippi schools. You know, we got to find out the reason why our four and five stars can't beat their two and three stars, you know, type of deal. Uh, we out recruit them every year. We've got greater facilities. We've got greater fan base. We've got everything better. But those Mississippi schools seem to have our number too often uh, type stuff. We didn't play bad, but we didn't play well. And you got to play well in this conference all the time. And what the answer is, consistency, I don't know. We had everything online. 
an Alabama mess up any time in the next month, and we we're playing for a conference championship, which means you might be playing for the playoffs, which means you might be playing for a national championship. Everything on the line, and uh, and we just didn't play very well. I mean, we dropped passes, we missed reads, we missed blocks, uh, the whole the whole shooting match. And and if you look at Mississippi's roster and you look at our roster when they were coming out of high school, you take our roster 110 times, you know, and um, and the same thing with our players now. We've got some great players here, but you got to show up on Saturday and play. And and uh, and as, as Jimbo says, you got to. I think he's, he's got a great saying. You, you play, you play with that against that faceless person in the mirror. You know that's what it is. You go out every day. You don't care if you're playing Mississippi or Alabama or, or Prairie View. It's all the same. And uh, until kids get that middle attitude, you have slip ups like Arkansas and Ole Miss and and Mississippi State. So it's disappointing. Because if you look at this, the Southeast Conference West, which is the strongest conference in the USA, you know the the Blue Dogs are the Alabamas, Auburns, LSU's, and A and M's, and the bottom half is Mississippi, Mississippi State, and Arkansas. From facilities, from from finances to players to everything, but uh, they seem to get a lot out of those kids down there, and uh, I give them all the credit to it. How do you think Jimbo handled it, and what do you think it means moving forward? Well, was that answer good enough for you? Uh, was that one good enough for you? Because uh, I, here's the thing. I don't think it's going to change a whole lot. It might change some uh, in the national narrative, but I don't think it's going to change a whole lot. And I think there's a bigger story working here. People are refusing on a national scale to acknowledge that a and is in that conversation and at that level. I get it. You know, like, like you know, if you're talking about you know, the Ohio States and uh, the long, long time ago Longhorns and, and you know, the, you know, the USC's and, and the premier jobs, whether they're good or not, they're always going to get the benefit of the doubt. And the Aggies, uh, who have been right there on the cusp, have, have made it over the top a couple of times, but wasn't sustaining it. Uh, they're just people refuse to acknowledge. Maybe it's because they haven't spent enough time in the facilities and haven't spent enough time digging into the depth of, of high level recruits that, that uh, Jimbo was bringing in, they just refuse to acknowledge the, the obvious. And, and I know, you know, there are a lot of LSU uh, fans out there that are refusing the obvious. And the obvious is Texas A&M is flat out a much better, not just a better, a much better situation and a much better program than LSU. I, I, I get it, but you have to acknowledge that first. So let me ask you this, because what they would say is, how is AM better than LSU? They haven't won a conference championship since 1998. They have no national championships since 1939. Yada, 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 yada. The last three coaches at LSU have won a national championship. You own the state of Louisiana. How can you tell me that AM is a better school or a better program? And I will tell you, I agree with you, but what do you say to them? I'll, t- I'll tell you this. Speaking as an old ag, <laughs> I'm old enough to remember when LSU was AM, and uh, flat out. Uh, in, in the in the mid '80s, uh, into the into the the '90s, LSU was that program that was on the cusp. They they they, they were. I, I went to games. AM beat them, I think, five times in a row, and then they canceled the the, the non conference series with the Aggies. LSU was a head scratching program with all that money, with all that passion, with all those facilities, with the state of Louisiana locked up. How could they not get to that next level? And then they did. I think what people are, are not understanding is AM is getting to that next level. And until you do it on a consistent basis, number one, I understand it, uh, you know, because I was in that same boat following LSU. I asked the same questions. How you know, it's not it's not as good a program as Texas. No way. It's not as good a program as all these others back in the day, you know, whatever programs those might have been. But it became that by by doing it on the field. And and so I think uh, the Aggies have, have done it on the field last year. Uh, they, they have been somewhat transitioning uh, this year to a, a new level, a, a new uh, depth chart, if you will. Um, and that transition has not been a big step back. You know, back in the day, you'd take a big step back because you didn't have the depth of recruits. Well, now they do. The, the Aggies are, 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 are basically what LSU was in the 80s and 90s. And wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this this has got to be a part of it. This has got wait. wait does it, what smash smash? What is the thing that you always tell me to do? Like subscribe. What do you watch YouTube? I mean, yeah, I watch YouTube. Okay, so yeah. at the end of videos, what do they usually say? Like, subscribe, follow, and what? Comment and, sh- and comment and yeah. share it. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, share. It. What else yeah. can you do? 
That's all I got. Yeah, just yeah. watch it. Yeah, watch it. That'd, that'd be the first thing. Yeah. Why are you telling me? Tell them. Yeah, let's watch it.